Hello everyone, let's look at this integral here. We have another integral that we can evaluate using integration by parts. And because that's, uh, we can see that that's a product, right? Because we have ln of x, even though that looks like a quotient, but we can also write it as ln x times one over the square root of x. And so in that case, we will be able to use integration by parts to find the antiderivative of this uh, function. Okay, so we are going to set up the table to do that. And so we have the following table right here, where we have the sign column, the differentiation column, the, uh, the integration column, and then a note column for keeping track of the, um, the integral that we are getting after we perform the integration by parts once and see whether we should stop or whether we should continue. Okay, so now let's get started on this. First, we are going to rewrite this integral so that it looks like a product. And the way to do it is to write the square root of x in the form of x to some power. And then we can do that. So if we are to do that, then we can bring this square root of x as L1 of x. Actually, I'm not going to skip the step. Yeah, so eventually we are going to bring it up, but we are going to write it as x to the 1 over 2 here. And then because we do not really want it to be a quotient, so we got to write it as a um, uh, product. So bring it up to the numerator. Then we are, all we need to do is to change this exponent into a negative exponent. We are taking the reciprocal. Okay, so we are going to get x to the negative 1 over 2, and then times L1 of x, and then dx. Okay, so now as you can see here, that becomes a product where we have uh, x to the negative 1 half times the L1x. Okay, and then you may say, which ones do we choose for the differentiation column, or which one do we should we choose for the integration column? Um, usually, because we can differentiate the L1 of x easily, then we are going to choose that as the differentiation column. And then, of course, we also need to make sure that we can integrate this x to the negative 1 over 2, and we can, right? So we can do that. Okay, so now let's start filling in the table. So the first row for the table is that we are going to put the sign right here. And we are going to put in the L1 of x. So we have the L1 of x in there. And then the integration column. Okay, so the integration column is this x to the negative 1 over 2. Now, as you can see here, this last column here, we'll, we'll just put down, uh, we'll just multiply all this together. Um, this plus sign, we assume that it's positive 1. So positive 1 times L1 x times x to the negative 1 over 2. And then there was a dx that's being omitted in this column. And all together will actually give you back the original integral. So we really have that original integral here. And it's just, just the same thing, right? So we are just copying. Okay, now what we need to do next is to go down the column. So we are going to put down the minus sign here. The signs are alternating. That's due to the integration by parts formula. So we have the minus sign here. And then the next one, the next one is the ln of x. Uh, we can differentiate this ln of x, which will give us the 1 over x. And then we can integrate this x to the negative 1 over 2, which will give us x to the 1 over 2 because we are adding 1 to this negative 1 over 2. So we are getting positive 1 over 2. And then we need to multiply by the reciprocal of this power, which is the 2. And so now we need to um, multiply all this together and see if we can stop or we need to continue to do the integration by parts. And so if we are doing that, then we have the um, negative. I'm, um, I'm keeping this negative sign on the outside the integral. And then I can actually put the 2 outside the integral as well. So I can put the 2 on the outside and then now the integral. All the other stuff will stay inside the integral because they're variables, right? So we have x to the 1 half. So we get that x to the 1 half right here. And then also that 1 over x. So we get the 1 over x right here. Yeah, so this is multiplication. So let me put a dot over there. Okay. 
And then of course there was the DX that's involved in here. So let me just put the DX. Now we just take a look at this. We can actually simplify this integrand. So all we need to do is to put this X to the one half and divide by the X, which will give us one over X to the one half and then DX. And then now all we need to ask ourselves is that, can we integrate this? And yes, we can, right? This is really just uh, another power function, right? So if we can integrate this directly, then we can stop. We do not need to continue going down the table. And so we can actually just integrate. We can just integrate this right now immediately and see what's going on. Okay, so we are going to get, um, we can rewrite this so that we would be getting negative two um, integral of x to the negative one over two dx. And it just turns out that we have already done the integration here in the table. So all we need to do is to just copy the result and then that will be the entire derivative of this integral of x to the negative one over two, assuming that we did this correctly. Okay, so our answer in this case would just be negative two times um, I just copy this 2x to the 1 half, right? And then I put it here. So we get 2x to the 1 half. And then, of course, simplifying the expression, we are going to get negative 4x to the 1 over 2. Yeah, there was the plus c and all that, but I'm omitting them until the end when I formally put down the final answer. Okay, so that's the antiderivative of this integral here. Okay, so now going back to the original problem, we can start writing down the answer. So when we put down the answer, it's going to be, let's go to the table here. We take, we take this plus sign and then multiply with this ln of x. That's our u, right? And then we do the dv, right? I mean the v, actually. This is the dv, so this is the v. So we multiply the u and the v together. So we are going to multiply the ln of x and then the 2x to the 1 half. And then that's our first turn for the answer, right? So we are going to get, now let me clean up the expression at the same time. So it's going to be two, right? So we have the two there, and then we have the x to the one half, and then we multiply by this L one of x. Okay, so that's that. And then what about uh, the second turn? The second turn will just be this. The second turn will be, can be put here. So we are going to get, we're going to get, because we already uh, integrated this. So we can just copy down the result. So we are going to get negative four x to the one over two. And then we put the constant, and put the plus C, and then we are finished with this problem. So as you can see, using the tablet method can be really convenient. And we can see that the process becomes really trivial. Uh, when the function only requires integration by parts only once, okay? So I will do another one next time, which will require a few more times of integration by parts, but, um, but by using the table, by using uh, what we call the row integration by parts method, we actually can just simplify the process a lot, um, a lot more, okay? So uh, thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and give me some support. I will continue to make more math videos. See you next time.